Hi again, I'm Trish Triantho Sullivan and I want to talk to you a little bit more about that basic daylight exposure, the sunny 16 rule, right? And how that theory of reciprocity works. So how that reciprocal relationship, right? That exciting reciprocal relationship between the shutter and the aperture work together. So as we talked about before, the aperture is more in control of the depth of field, right? The DOF, depth of field, that's the aperture. And the shutter is more in control of motion. Okay, so when we, when we know that, that's gonna help us out a lot, right? So we were talking about how if you change one, you have to change the other to compensate. That's what reciprocal means. You're reciprocating, right? So if, if uh, you're, you're creating that balance of, of the amount of light entering your camera, right? And remember, they enter in different ways. This is, the aperture is a window, right? That can change its size, kind of like the pupil of your eye. And the shutter is a curtain that can open and close either very slowly or very quickly. Right? And that'll help you out a lot to kind of remember why, how those controls are working together um, to create an exposure, right? Because remember, they both work together to create that magical exposure. Um, so we talked about the sunny 16 rule. The sunny 16 rule, remember, is like if the sun is shining and it's at least 20 degrees above the horizon, right? If it's a sunny day, um, and you keep your aperture at f16 and your shutter speed at 1 250th of a second, right? That's always going to create a correct exposure. Right? A correct exposure on any sunny day anywhere in the world, okay? Um, and that's your starting point. That's your starting point for a lot of different uh, lighting conditions, right? Um, and so there's some, there's, you can use this sunny 16 rule. I'm gonna write it back down again. Sunny 16 rule, okay? Um, to photograph in a lot of different lighting conditions. So you say, Oh, we live in Salinas and or Marina or South Valley. Um, it's foggy and cloudy all the time around Salinas. We get that that marine layer coming in. So how does that help me if I have to have the sun out in order to to make this work? Right. Well, that's a good question, and I'm going to answer it for you right now. How it helps you is that this is just your starting point, the F16 and 250th of a second. Let's say you have a cloudy or foggy day. And you want to photograph. How do you set your camera? Well, you need to put in three stops plus three stops, more light. Well, how do you do that? You can do it uh, in any number of ways. You can put, you can open your window, right? You can open your aperture wider. You can put two stops, you can change two stops um, from F16, say to F4, and that'll open up your aperture um, two stops and give, or, or three stops, I'm sorry. Let's see, two stops, three stops, right? More light. So you would open your aperture, or you could slow down your shutter speed, okay? You could, instead of doing this, you could make your shutter speed slower. You could go from 2 50th of a second to 1 25th to 1 60th to 1 30th. That would give you three stops more light um, for clouds and fog. Okay? Pretty straightforward. You could do it either way, or you could do a combination. Um, 1 30th of a second is kind of a slow shutter speed, so you might do, say, two stops on your aperture and just one stop on here, and that equals the three stops that you need for a cloudy or foggy day, okay? What about indoors? Okay. 
Um, normally that's four to five stops more light, okay? Four to five stops more light. Once again, you might do um, just one or a combination. So I could use my aperture, open it up, right? Make it larger, two, three, four stops. And maybe I need one more stop right, to make that work. So indoors, four to five stops. A night, like a well-lit night, um, let's say um, downtown or, or a, say a sports game. So it could be night sport or night like a, like a, a, a lit a street, a well-lit street, right? You have to have some light on it, right? That would be six stops plus six stops more light. So in that case, we know we have our starting point here. That's quite a bit, so that's gonna take probably a combination of both, right? We might wanna do two stops here, one, two, three stops there. Um, I'm, whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six. That gives us our six stops that we need to photograph at night for a correct exposure because right, we want that correct exposure. Um, that's pretty straightforward and easy. How about another one? We'll try candlelight. That would be plus 10 stops. Okay, so candlelight would be plus 10 stops of light. So to get that you would have to do a lot, right? One, two, three, four. Wow, one second exposure, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine stops. Whoa, I'm missing a stop. What am I gonna do? I need to have one more stop in order to photograph in candlelight. And this, my friends, is when you can change your ISO if you need that extra stop it's called um, pushing your film in photography. They call it pushing um, your film if you need to add a little bit more light and you can't quite get it. And to do that, you would change your ISO, say from 200 to 400. So this is where you could use your ISO as an extra stop. So you could change your ISO to 400 that would let in that little bit of extra light. Now, I don't want you to mess with this right now. This is just for you to know for the future, okay? You know that your ISO can come in and give you that extra stop. Now, I wanna to talk to you one more, there's one more thing I wanna tell you because I think this might help you to understand where that term stops came from. So let's talk about that just really quickly. Now, we've, I've been saying F-stop, and I told you that it's, the F is, stands for something. Um, that's where it came from. So I think it might help you to know where that term came from. So let me get a different color pen here and we'll talk about the F stop. This is a term in photography that is used to describe not only the F numbers for your aperture, okay, but it's also often used for the shutter as well. It'll describe these shutter numbers that represent the speed of the shutter. Um, so that's our, remember our sunny 16, okay. Um, so the F stop, uh, and, and this might help you too, because I think this is an important thing to know. Every whole number on your aperture and on your shutter represents exactly twice the amount of light, right? If you're getting like larger window or half the amount of light if you're going to a smaller window. So if we're looking say at the aperture 
and we know that F1 is the biggest aperture, right? F2 is gonna be half that size, F4 is gonna be half the size of F2, and F8 is gonna be half the size of F4. Okay, they'll just keep getting smaller as we go down. If we go the other direction, it's gonna be twice the size, right, as we get larger. It either doubles the amount of light that comes into the camera or cuts it in half, depending on which direction you're going, smaller aperture or larger aperture, right? That makes sense to everyone? So it's, it's either um, doubling or halving the amount of light. So it's either twice, two times the light or one half the light, depending on which direction you're going. So on the shutter speed, right, this is one second, and we got one fifteenth of a second, right? And one thirtieth of a second is gonna let in one half the amount of light that this does. One sixtieth will be one half the amount of light there, and so on, until we get up here, where there's hardly any light coming in through the shutter, because it's opening and closing so fast at one, Two thousand two thousandths of a second, okay? Um, and then in the opposite direction, in st as we add, as we slow down the shutter, we're at doubling the amount of light for each one. Double, 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 till we get up to the whole number, which is one second, right? So <clears throat> the shutter speeds and the F numbers, the aperture numbers, either double or half the amount of light coming into the camera. That's why it's so easy to do that reciprocal relationship because they both do the same thing. They either double the amount of light or half the amount of light. And they're all called f-stops. So you'll hear that often when we're talking about this, okay? They're called the f-stops. Um, and this is where they came from. So remember we talked about view cameras, those big cameras that were really boxy and huge. Um, make this a little bit larger here so you can see it better. We had these big boxy cameras and these were the first cameras, right? These were the ones that people, when photography was first invented, these were the cameras that they used, right? It was pretty simple. Um, it had, you know, just a lens on one side and a back on it where the film was. Like they'd put a big, what they had was a, a film holder and they'd put a big sheet of film at the back. Sometimes slid in from a little slit at the side here or sometimes slid in from a slit at the top. But they didn't have any way to change the aperture, right? They didn't have an aperture in the lens. Um, and so what they did is they, they invented what they called stop plates. Okay. So stop plates uh, look kind of like this. Let me get a different color here and we'll show you what the stop plate looks like. Um, so they made these uh, metal plates like this with different size holes in them and they would slide into the top or the side of the camera right behind the lens. So we'll just put some little dotted lines here so you can kind of see where they'd be at. Okay. And, um, and they would have different size holes in them. So you might have one that had a big hole and then you wanted to have a smaller aperture, you would stop it down with a stop plate with a smaller hole in it. Um, so it would, that doesn't look, that looks a little off kilter there. There we go. All right, so they'd have these metal plates that they would shove down into the camera behind the lens here with different size holes in them and they were called stop plates and you would stop down your aperture. You'd stop down the, that was, these were like aperture plates. Anyway, they called them stop plates and that's where the term f-stop came from, that's where the stop came from. The f, the f comes from, you ready?
focal length. And the focal length refers to the length of your lens, how long your lens is on your camera. So the F stop, F is for focal length of the lens, and the stop is for the stop plate. And they've used those to describe both F numbers for the aperture and shutter speeds, the shutter speed numbers for the shutter. It's pretty simple. Now that you know that, I think understanding how the controls work will be a lot easier. I'll see you in the next lecture. Have a good day.